let me ask you a really personal question and anyone listening will empathize with this. So although I'm not one of them, I am not someone who is uh, afraid to <laughs> pass gas in front of my wife. She, you know, I'm one of those people who yeah. I live my life. And since we live together, there are times where she experiences the uncomfortable odors that can come from the human body, for instance. And what I'm getting at here is I have friends who are married who still say that they've never farted in front of their spouse, who, you know, they won't even have a bowel movement while their spouse is in the same house. And I don't, I don't understand that because it's hard enough being a normal person, but here you had to, and, and your husband, um, Matthew, right? Yeah. I mean, you have to hear hear you're sharing with someone who is your spouse, who you married before all of this happened, and you're having to share something that is so personal. And again, getting back to a lot of couples out there, oh, I never, ever, ever would fart. And yet your your husband is helping you change ostomy bags, which are full of feces. And it's <laughs> yeah. Like, how did, how did you guys manage that? Ooh, I mean, he's here right now. I think it's, uh, I mean, I've never been like shy, I guess, like you, I'm not like, Oh, I'm afraid to do anything. And I had all sort of colitis for eight years. So I was going to the bathroom 50 plus times a day. So I think that you really lose all anything where you're trying to hide anything. You just it becomes impossible when you're going to the bathroom 15 times a day. Um, I He was my rock for this and he was kind of figuring it out as we went. We just, I don't know. I, I think we just like, we're a team and we're in this together. And you know, when it's like this person will either die or this is what it is. It's like, it, it's, I, I would say like the nine months that I was doing this and it felt very like fight or flight. And I feel like he was possibly in that fight or flight mode too, where it's like, you don't have time to be like, Ooh, or this is gross. Or I don't know. It's like, we're just trying to survive. Like I'm just trying to get through the surgeries. I'm trying to become functional. I'm trying to like get to a place where I'm healthy and, and like, you'd be surprised what people can do when they're, you know, when they have to. And we just had to, it wasn't. Well, and I applaud, you know, I, I applaud both of you because one of the things I've always learned in medicine is if you have a partner, it empowers you. And these are very lonesome experiences, no matter what you're dealing with and getting back to, I think you probably correct me if I'm wrong, but you were empowered to share every bit of your journey because you had Matthew there with you, as opposed to so many people out there. And, and that's why I was excited to talk to you. So many people go through something like this. So, you know, with you dealt with ulcerative colitis for eight years and had to have, you know, I know you weren't excited to have the surgery, but you go through all of these things. And there are so many people who go through these alone yeah. and then they isolate themselves. And then it's not just a physical problem. It's an emotional problem. It is a psychological problem. And um, there's so much embarrassment and even shame there when there shouldn't be. And I think that's, you know, that is a very tough thing to overcome unless you have a partner or someone. And that partner doesn't have to be a spouse. It can yeah. be a sister, a parent, a child. It, but I think that, that that was one of the cool things I noted in watching your documentary is how, you know, I really got the sense that you two were a team and that you treated each other with dignity through this whole process versus, you know, what, what happens sometimes is it either kills you or makes you stronger. And it seems like it made you two stronger. For sure. 